for FPS junkies such as myself, there's pretty much nothing more important than sensitivity. It's the number one command that gets spammed in your favorite streamer's chat each and every waking moment. Hell, they don't even need to be live on Twitch to have someone pop in and start asking. But, as I'm sure many of you are aware, there are essentially two schools of FPS player. There are those who play with high sends, and those who play with low sends. Some high sensitivity superstars have made a name for themselves because of their freakish flicks and snappy spray downs. And simple. Oh, looking to get him while he runs. No! Oh, holy sh Yeah, it wasn't that fast. <laughs> while others have managed to crack the code of popping heads with some of the lowest sensitivities in esports. This is where Reynas oh my are God. born. This is where Reynas are bred. One more. Oh. Yep, now the duelists are starting to come through. He avoids no the way. flash! On this week's episode, we are taking a look at some of the greatest players ever to brandish a low sense in esports. Why do they do it? How do they do it? And are they sort of holding themselves back by using such a sluggish sensitivity? Okay, so before we start talking about sensitivities and CS and all that cool stuff, we gotta talk really quick about Valorant. More specifically, the VCT watch parties that Liz has been hosting and will continue to host this weekend on our Twitch channel. So if you're at all interested, be sure to check out twitch.tv slash the score esports to watch Liz curse people. Oh, doesn't lose it, well. oh my lord. And it's more than calculated. <laughs> it is pinpoint all right. So if you are a tactical FPS player, then there's a very good chance that either now or sometime in the past, you have gravitated towards a so-called low sensitivity, especially when you were sort of learning the ins and outs of the genre. Part of the reason for this is that such genre of shooter typically requires far less vertical movement than, say, arena shooters or battle royales. Try playing Fortnite with the low sends, and chances are you're gonna get your shit kicked in by a 12-year-old snorting a Tide Pod. Well, lower sense is just uh, easier to control in, in tech FPSs, right? We're not playing battle royales. This is an Apex. This is in Fortnite. We're not. No one's cranking a 90. Like this is. Like if you have good game sense, right? They can only come out of this one choke. So if you just have the most control for like, you know, this specific kind of like field, right? Where they're just like within like this slim view, they show up on your screen here, like you have the most control there. And now the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. All right, let's take this out of the context of tax shooters for a change, because as much as Dimitri loves to wax philosophical about Counter-Strike, there are, in fact, other games. Since Ethos was kind enough to mention a game that I actually play, let's chat about Apex. While on the surface, Apex and CS are both first-person shooters, the actual shooting couldn't be more different between the two, and they make a great example for different ways that you can harness your sensitivity as a tool. Where CS gunfights are generally slow and methodical, in Apex, they're fast and frantic. You're often fighting multiple people or even multiple teams of legends who are sprinting, flying, portaling, or ziplining through the fight. Thanks to the speed of movement and the longer time to kill, you're generally rewarded more for your ability to track with your aim rather than simply flicking and hitting that initial shot faster. Thanks to these differences, you see a markedly higher average EDPI among Apex Pro players when compared to CS and Valorant. Roughly 1,169 according to the data on ProSettings.net. Between all of that and the entire other video we did on sensitivity, not to mention mouse acceleration, I think it's pretty fair to say that you can often be best served by a different sense in different games. But I wanna take this idea one step further and suggest that playing different roles, even in the same game, could also warrant a sensitivity shift. Since I've been playing a lot of hockey recently, allow me a sports metaphor to illustrate my point. Everyone on the ice has a stick, but they will vary from player to player. The length, curve of the blade, flexibility, angle between the shaft and blade, are all variables a player can choose to best fit their position and style of play. 
While I certainly don't think it's a necessity, being open to changing your sensitivity could make you a much more versatile player between different games and different roles. Up to a certain point, you could actually find some real benefit experimenting with different sensitivities when you take on different roles or characters for your team. But that qualifier, up to a certain point, is also important here. You're bound to lose any of those potential benefits if you're just wildly shifting your sensitivity every round. Moving in small steps from an established, comfortable base is also a critical piece of the puzzle. Most of us aren't pro players spending almost all of our time mastering a single game. So as you jump from game to game, or even roll to roll, you shouldn't feel chained to your sensitivity. And that was the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. Now, before you all go ahead and start hemorrhaging DPI, there is a very simple, practical question that you need to ask yourself. And that is, how much desk space do you have? You see, playing on a low sensitivity does raise certain spatial limitations. If your desk or mouse pad is too small, then you might find yourself lifting your mouse a little too often and thus losing control of your movements. What low sense players suffer from is when they peek somewhere they're not expecting off their screen, right? Those big flicks that take a long time to travel. They might not even have, might not even have enough mouse pad, you know, uh, depending on how low their sense is. And yet, in spite of these admittedly annoying spatial constraints, the vast majority of TAC FPS players still default to a lower sensitivity. And that's because with some good crosshair placement and just decent game sense, even an average player can see some solid results. By simply holding an angle at head level and clicking on your opponent's head as they step into your view, you can eliminate the need to flick. Now, I say that, but it's pretty natural to wonder why anyone would even want to use a low DPI when there are aimbots out there doing crazy shit like this with ridiculously high DPIs. You're looking primed for 12 unless someone can absolutely pop off. Is it time for Asuna? Does he get a timing here on the Android? Wants to try to push, sees the weapon, finds the kill. Asuna for three, would have to be an ace. Gets information, finds the fourth, knows where the last player is. Paint Shell's trying to push him out, but can he actually find the kill in time? Blast back over. Asuna will use this to get at least halfway in the defusal. Shanks on the opposite, picture in picture. Oh my God. You see, at first glance, playing with high sensitivity sort of just looks better. Players like Asuna are known for their twitchy aim, and some of their ridiculous highlights might not have ever been possible had they not been playing on a high sense. Just like we mentioned in our episode on mouse sensitivity last year, high sense players are often wrist aimers who can easily whip their crosshair around in game. The higher your eDPI, the less you have to move your mouse around your mouse pad in order to click heads. And it makes sense, especially for those of you who might have limited desk space. If you simply can't swing your arm around in giant strides or want that sudden control that wrist aiming offers, you might feel forced to use a higher sensitivity. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. For some of the world's best aimers, these physical limitations have actually helped define their playstyle. Is he really gonna take this fight again? It's Greek versus Zorp, and precise as always. It was Whoa! six in a row, and he's got two no! in a row. Four! Zerk jumps into the jaws, and what's it? He's so damn hungry here. He's had his dinner. And he's got the ball! It doesn't matter where they come from. Tarek couldn't do a thing, and Wopsik is a beast! Look at the shots coming through. This guy is one of the world's fastest snipers. Unbelievable, so good. And look at him go, another Whoa. amazing shot. The high sensitivity prevails. But just like there are players who are known for their wrist-shattering flicks, there are also those who are known to have mastered the art of arm aiming. Their pixel-perfect crosshair placement allows them to hold angles and pop heads as enemies just walk into their waiting arms. 30 seconds. Nico looking to activate, takes the all three! For most players who are new to TAC FPS, it's often recommended to start off on lower sensitivity so as to think specifically about crosshair placement. Eliminating the need to flick typically helps with consistency since it quite literally forces you to think about the best place to put your crosshair. It's really hard to be consistent on high sense. There's just some days where 
you know, you might hit everything and it'll look super flashy because you have this like ridiculous sensitivity, but uh, this is just going to be days where you just can't hit those pixels as consistently. And then those are the days that are going to really stick out for you because, you know, you're just getting bodied by people holding angles and you can't do anything about it. And in the world of Counter-Strike in particular, there are a ton of competitors who are known for boasting some pretty freaking low EDPIs. Nico and Twists, for example, are some of the greatest players ever to touch the game, and they play on 604 and 560 EDPI, respectively. And this might just be one of the reasons that they've been able to remain so damn consistent over their careers. They're considered some of the best riflers and eaglers in the entire world. Hell, Twists just won a f***ing major. It's up to Carrigan, broke, he does hit the shot, and Carrigan good for the headshot now, running out of options, oh, and that'll oh, do, oh. that'll do nicely! Former Kingwin, Virtus Pro, and Evil Genius's rifler, Mihu is known for taking low sends a step further, boasting an absurdly low EDPI of 376. This dude must have the widest f***ing desk in the world. But it doesn't stop him from clapping cheeks. Uh oh, no, not like this. Mihu, oh god, he's out there, he's exposed. They're toying with him, but Mihu is absolutely perfect. Now, as I'm sure you all remember, when Valorant came out, everyone was quick to compare it to Counter-Strike. It was a new TAC FPS with very similar gun mechanics, and many of the CSGO pros who switched games brought their same sensitivities over to Valorant and just converted them. But Valorant isn't the same game at all. In fact, many pros have found themselves raising their sensitivities to compensate for all of the agent abilities. Good luck shooting the endless flying utility bullshit when a jet or raise or whatever jumps over your head while you're playing on low sense. You'll just end up swinging your mouse off your desk. But that said, there is one player who continues to play Valorant on a very low sensitivity. And that anomaly is the Chaos Boy himself, Leaf. Yeah, they're better map for They've just been incredible at. That was a stimmied up a Oh, he's going for it again. Ferrari swinging and Leaf rips his head off. Map one, map two. <sighs> it was going in favor of Cryo. It was I'm going not, in favor. I'm not sure it will be at the end of this. Leaf is a monster right now. Feels nice back again. It's the first map too where we've been able to see this jet head to head. Leaf is Cloud9's golden boy. He's one of the most cracked duelists in North American Valorant, and you can pretty much always count on seeing some form of highlight from him basically after every C9 match. But what makes Leaf so special is the fact that he plays with an in-game sense of 0.185 at 800 DPI, which makes his Valorant EDPI just 148. Of course, since Valorant's sensitivity slider isn't actually one-to-one, -one, and thus the so-called EDPIs listed on sites like Pro Settings don't actually mean anything, we multiply by 3.18, convert it to an actual one-to-one -one sensitivity multiplier, and that gives us a cogent value of about 470 EDPI. This dude is basically doing an upper body workout every time he cues into deathmatch. Just to put this in perspective, the average EDPI of a Valorant competitor is about 898, according to ProSettings.net. Well, no, ProSettings has it listed as 280, but again, that doesn't mean anything. Okay, just to make sure that this doesn't all sound like Dimitri being his usual CS elitist self, I do want to back him up on this one. We talked about EDPI in our previous mouse sensitivity episode, but ProSettings.net will calculate this stat by multiplying your mouse DPI by the sensitivity value in game. The problem, one sensitivity in Counter-Strike is not the same as one sensitivity in Valorant. So while they call both these numbers EDPI, you can't compare one with the other in any meaningful way. For a quick example, one sensitivity on 800 DPI in Counter-Strike gives you your full 800 effective DPI of sensitivity. But those same settings in Valorant would be the equivalent of roughly 2,545 effective DPI. This is why we need to convert each game to a one-to-one -one sensitivity scale before we calculate the EDPI. One other metric that people often use when comparing between games is centimeters per 360. So anytime we had EDPI values up on screen, I threw up the corresponding centimeters per 360 so that we could all be on the same page. 
Long story short, eDPI isn't just DPI multiplied by sensitivity. Anyway, I'll let Dimitri get back to talking about LEAF. Pretty much half as slow as the average Valorant Pro, LEAF sensitivity is one of the lowest you will ever see in the eSport, which might actually be why he's been able to remain so damn consistent. But what's particularly impressive is the fact that he plays these in-your-face duelist agents like Jet and Rays. Many entry fraggers tend to play on a slightly higher sensitivity because their job is to clear angles as rapidly as possible and make space for their team. Flashes to get in, they're gonna have to win these gunfights. And then they have so many problems on their hands and just no solutions. TPing away, it's fast, but not fast enough to leave. Watching him play, it's like, I, I didn't expect him to be on low sense, to be honest, right? But he his game sense is just that good. And he always has a plan for, you know, if this, this, or this happens, this is what I'm gonna do. That he doesn't need to kind of be more flexible with uh, his aim and his crosshair on his sensitivity because he already has all these planned out. He already, he's already expecting these nine other different things. And that's what makes Leaf such a great player. Of course, now the Chamber has effectively ruined the fucking game, Leaf has been playing the French Opera more and more. And you could argue that it actually suits his sensitivity even more than duelists like Jet and Raze. But since the recent Chamber nerfs are yet to hit pro play at the time of writing, we'll just have to wait and see if duelist mains like Leaf return to playing Jet and potentially give back the Sentinel role to one of their teammates. But let's get back to the final question that we posed at the four, which is, are players like Leaf or Twists sort of nerfing themselves by playing at such a low sensitivity? CSGO riflers in particular tend to gravitate towards a lower sensitivity overall, with an average EDPI of 854, while Oppers have an average EDPI of 1096, according to ProSettings.net. So although guys like Twists and Leaf do play on a much lower sensitivity than the average rifler, I think it's fair to say that it suits their role, and they're not putting themselves at too much of a disadvantage. Twists was considered to be one of the most unstoppable aimers in CS during Liquid's Grand Slam run in 2019, and he continued to boast the highest headshots per round of any pro player throughout all of 2020 and 2021 in spite of his absurdly low sense. Like Lily, like anyone can out aim somebody. Especially like everyone at top five. I'm gonna put myself though. I don't care. <laughs> His sensitivity may be low in comparison to others, but there isn't one sensitivity that trumps all. As much as we'd all like to just plug in our favorite pro settings and frag out, that's just not how it works. It takes time to find your own god sense. That magic number is different for everyone, and the time that it takes to find it varies not only from player to player, but game to game. I play Siege, for instance, at 7758, so about 728 eDPI. And whenever people watch my POV, they think my sensitivity is at least twice as high as it actually is. Just because you're on low sends doesn't mean you can't be flicky and frantic and in control. What's really weird is that I actually prefer to play Siege on low sends and Counter-Strike on high sends. If it weren't for compatibility issues, i.e. muscle memory, I'd pretty much only ever play CSGO at what I have dubbed the Shroud sends, 2.7 at 400, which is about 1080 eDPI, since for whatever reason, it feels best for me. Who knows, maybe it's because I'm a Chad who plays native. Speaking of resolution, that's actually one of the things that allows for turrets like Nico and Twists to one-tap fools with such precision. The fact that they play on 4-3 stretched. Sure, their sensitivities are low as shit, but because their POVs are stretched out, they can basically tunnel vision on whatever the hell is actually on it. They may not be able to see a lot or 180 on a dime, but if you do happen to be unfortunate enough to end up on these dudes' screens, you are just f***ing dead. 
Nico, he's not going to respect that. Looks to push over top. We've got Nitro still 8 HP because... Oh! oh! <laughs> <laughs> what? That's so oh! sick! Nico just going to rock their world. B site is gone. Oh, and the retake is nothing. It is nothing in the face of Nico. <laughs> what the hell is that? But that's what works for them, just like something else might work for you. Low Sends is reliable, but it isn't for everyone. Nothing is. Unfortunately, sensitivity is just finicky like that. There's multiple sensitivities that are good. There's tons that'll work for different people. And I hate to break it to you, it's gonna take a lot of trial and error individually for you to find the perfect CSGO sense for yourself. I think it just depends on the player, really, at the end of the day. like. I mean, if you're used to it, you're going to be used to it. But I think switching your sense every after every game or whatever in the middle of the game, you're definitely going to be inconsistent because all that muscle memory that you've built up won't be there. So maybe it's time for some of you to try something new. Who knows? Maybe low sends is exactly what you need to start ranking up. It can take time to find that one special sensitivity, but trust me, the moment you do is magical. That's what it is, bro. They just take one number, they take another number, they, they slap them together, and then the butterfly meme. Is this EDPI? <laughs> it's infuriating. Get rid of part of you that cringes. Keep the part of you that loves the cringe.